how y'all doing? All right. This is going to be the post maiden and the post assembly or build uh, assembly, really, of the Avios King Twin. All right. Let's start with the negative stuff right off the bat. Okay. Y'all watched the unboxing video and you saw there were things I, I was going to have to do. Let's start with the wing halves. All right. What I did, they did line up perfectly. They they licked it. They uh, didn't click in, but they seated in there perfectly. On this side of the wing, not not the uh, extension part, but the, the closest part, I took a soft, um, what's that, a sanding uh, brush, and just sanded just a little bit of material. Just a little bit, of maybe a millimeter worth of material, evenly on both sides. Okay? Then I was able to slide that in, and what you have to do is you have to press it in, and you kind of have to massage it in with a lot of force, and you'll hear it click. And when it clicks, I mean, it ain't coming off. Okay? Now, same thing over here. Had to sand a little, about a millimeter worth of material on the inside wing, slid it in, kind of massage the end, then you hear it click. Now, when you hear it click, what you're going to see, if I can get this camera in here close enough, okay, hold on, okay, you're going to see this little area here. Well, you'll see the tab go up in there. And it clicks in this little area here. Okay, just kind of, you'll see it go in and clicks in, locks in place. What you're going to want to do, if you're going to keep taking this on and off, take something kind of sharp to pull that tab up just a touch so it locks in. Now, full disclosure for me, you're going to have to just trust me that I'm telling you the truth. Okay? Yesterday or last night when I built it, see the wing? I got a battery in there, a Ford cell battery. That's on there. I did this last night. Directly after that, after it clicked in, I felt that little piece come up and I pulled it up a little bit, pulled that tab up a little bit, and did this exact same thing. Okay? And it held its weight, it feels rock solid. So Leave it alone, pull the tab up just a touch, you'll see what I mean when you do it. You know, and hear that click, when it clicks in, it's in. It ain't coming undone. Now, I have I have a large truck and a large SUV. Well, the SUV is not that big. But I have no plans on taking the wing apart. So, on that little tab area, once I got it seated in, I took a little foam tack, a little foam tack type glue, which is Gorilla, their clear grip, and filled just that little plastic tab area in with the uh, Gorilla glue, just so that tab wouldn't fall back down and possibly, by vibration or whatever, come undone. Because I don't plan on taking the wing apart. Now, I still trust that tab system; it would work. But I'm not going to take the wing apart, so go ahead and. You know, just a little extra peace of mind for me, and put that glue only in that tab part. Now, if I want to remove that, I just put a little bit of acetone in there, or fingernail polish remover, same thing, and it will it would loosen up that foam tack, and it's just plastic in that area, and I could take the tab off, and I could service that part of the wing if I needed to. So that's just a little trick, a uh, little free belt build tip, or uh, that I don't charge a little. Uh, Nail polish will take foam tack and that type of glue uh, off. Um, alcohol will take off uh, hot glue. Okay. The other thing that was a problem for me is I found that the ball link, the little clear plastic ball link, um, didn't have to do much trimming, mechanical trimming, but the little ball links that hold your control surfaces, you notice this has got a little bit of slop to it now, and they're just clear plastic. The ball links are clear plastic. They're not heavy duty. 
Well, after popping it on, on and off a little bit to get my mechanically trimmed alien, I broke the ball link in my, in my hand. So, you know, I don't have Hobby King Reservoir of parts right here, so I found another little clevis and uh, a control rod that fit and put that on it. The rest of the old ball links are on it. So be aware that the ball links, the plastic ball links, they're clear, they're kind of a off, off clear, they're kind of, almost kind of a yellowish. Um, if you manipulate them too much or you're a little too rough with them, those plastic ball wings, ball, ball link, the receiving part, not the, the, the ball itself is made of metal, but the, uh, the plastic part that pops on that, that constitutes the ball link is a more of a plastic cap. And I don't know what I did with it. Okay. So that's that. And that I overcame that problem. Okay, um, the other thing that I, is not really a problem, but you've got this UVEC with a blue light just kind of hooked up to your power, and it's kind of just flopping around there. Well, I, what I did was I hollowed out a little bit of the um, foam here and double-sided tape it up under there to kind of get it out of the way. And the other thing I did, because of that pretty blue light, pretty blue light, this is neither negative or positive, I uh, hollowed out a little bit of that, and that way of an evening, if I fly, that blue light will show into the cabin. Not something you have to do, but I wanted that you back up and out of the way. Okay, that was important to me, to get it up and out of the way. The other negative, um, on the plane, and this is a big one. And it may have just been this unit. May not be all of them, okay? But my nose retract did not work at all. You could hear it trying to work. As soon as I got out of the box and started getting it together, you know, you always test everything first, and the grind, it's almost like the gears were out of sync, and uh, I literally took, um, the retract completely out of the plane, took the retract apart, made sure everything was working, put the retract completely back together. I mean, so far I'm actually taking both halves of the retract apart, okay? I don't mean just taking it out, I mean taking the retract parts apart, okay? <laughs> made sure everything was working right, put it back together. I got it working a few times, but then it failed again. And the little rocker that that rose on the spinner, uh, the screwdriver that goes back and forth. Once you get it out, it's hard to get that back in place. So I, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna fight with Hobby King and I wasn't gonna make a big deal about it because it may just be this unit. And and I'd already modified the cabin so it's not like I can turn uh, send the plane back. I have my crashed F-16. I have three retracts in that that aren't being used. So I took an E-Flight retract, just the retract motor itself, which fit perfectly in here. The only problem is, is that the spindle, okay, the spindle part of this, the long gear, wouldn't fit into the retract. So what I had to do is, I don't know what this part of a retract is called. It is the metal part that rocks, maybe that's the trunnion, I don't know, but that's the part that rocks back and forth. Well, this is the E-Flight one. It was, the, the aperture was too small for this piece of landing gear to fit in. I thought about filing it off and eh, but the, the, at this piece from the failed retract, which that's the pieces of, fit perfectly in the E-Flight retract. So I put that in there and lined there. Everything else in that retract is E-Flight except for that metal rocker piece, whatever that's called, that the trunnion, I don't know. And uh, put it all back, and of course the E-Flight retract worked perfectly from the get-go. Absolutely no problem at all with that. Now, once you get, if you have, if you're not having a problem with retract, well then great. The other, the, the back retracts, no problem at all. Okay, but, I do notice that because you've got so much slot in the steering, 
let me get this model turned or we can I can show you sorry because you've got so much slop in the steering um, as you go up and down up and down with your retracts you got to make sure that this is straight because otherwise the retract won't close. I mean, it'll get hung up here. Just the nose gear. You see, look at that. That's slopping around, okay? So what I did is I shaved a little bit of the foam off the side. Not that it, because it still fit, but it would hit it every so often after multiple times. So just go ahead to negate that and not have to worry about it. I just shaved some of that foam out of there. Okay? And uh, working, oh, Working on the retract was not a problem. There's plenty of room in there. Um, all you have to do is just remove the two screws here, and there are two screws there. This plate comes out, the four screws that hold the retract in. It was not a problem. Really, seriously, it was not a problem. Um, but the fact that I had to do that was a, a problem. I shouldn't have to replace a retract on a, on a brand new plane, never being flown. Um, the took the as one of my viewers again. I forgot. I'm sorry. He told me about it. Um, took the nacelles off. You know, took the props off. There's only two screws on either side that hold these nacelles on. Took the nacelles off the the covers, the cowlings, and not the whole thing, just the the front. Sorry, not the whole nacelle. And uh, took the cow and found one of the screws of the eight screws, four in each. One of them was a little bit loose. Tightened it up, no problem. The props do not look to be out of balance, however, and I didn't balance them. I normally do. I didn't this time. Um, but okay, my hands are away. When okay, I'm, I'm just holding the nose gun. I'm being careful. Okay. To look down the props, to look at these props, they look like they're spinning evenly. There's no play back and forth, no wobble. The front of the nose cones don't seem to have any wobble looking from both sides. Okay, so that's usually a good, motor off, a good indication that you've got an out of balance prop. Is you'll, as it runs, you'll see it's just a slight bit of wobble or you'll see your nose cone has a slight bit of wobble. There's none of that. I will end up taking these props off and balancing, uh, balancing them. Okay, and that's the only negatives. Okay, the uh, the they sh they could have charged another thirty five dollars for this plane and put in some nice shock absorbing gear. That would have been great. Okay, but they didn't. They want to get this out at a certain price point. You know, if this would have had nice shock absorbing landing gear, and this had been a stronger nose gear, you know, that, you know, they, they went so far to do all these other things and make it great, but then they, like, they just ran out of inspiration and, and said, okay, that's where we got to stop. We'd like to have that, but we just can't go any further. I think they should have. I think they should have go ahead and put some nice uh, trailing link suspension type, you know, good metal. Uh, landing gear on this, but they did. Uh, so, talk about the pros. She flies great. I needed. I did. And I, you'll see the maiden. We're gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna put the maiden at the end of this video. Okay. She flies great. I'm actually no, I'm on. I'll make this a separate video because just you know you don't sit here for three and a half hours watching me. Um, she flies, yeah, she flies amazing. Needs absolutely no um, elevator to flap mix that I could tell. I came in for a landing with the flaps down. I saw her flying. No ballooning or descending at all. Full flaps all the way down. And, you know, so I don't need that. Let me show you the flaps. And I have a uh, typical spectrum 25% down for... Uh, takeoff flaps will be a positive 25 percent and then a positive 100 percent for landing didn't and did not need any elevator mix at all and then negative 100 percent for the uh, flaps to be all the way up 
Um, I only ran her on one rate, 100% throws over 30% expo everywhere on all control services. So flew great. Um, I did notice when flying her, you you don't want to turn slowly. She got a thin, she got a long wing but a thin wing. Okay, so turning too slowly in an aileron turn, you might invite a tip stall. So a little bit of speed in your turns. Um, landing her is very easy, I, but today, my maiden today was very windy, 15 mile hour winds gusting here and there. And so the, not the best, best time to maiden a plane, but I wanted to show it to you. I just had the unboxing, I wanted to do it. Um, so she flew really well, handled the wind no problem. It, didn't, didn't really seem to bother the, the plane at all, okay? But some of that may have been my Spectrum uh, receiver. Now, to show you where I have, speaking of receivers, to show you where I ended up putting the receiver, okay? If you look, let me get it where it's tilted where you can see, right up in there, tucked with the uh, Spectrum logo going backwards, is the uh, what is that AR6T whatever the two long antennas the, the $110 one the one that you can put uh, telemetry sensors to and stuff um, that's what that one is I've got one antenna going straight here and then up then one antenna going straight in okay so they're at 90 degrees from each other which is what you want have, uh, when, I, when I'm doing a range test with my Spectrum, I get her out to you know 95, 100 feet away from me, and I hit the range uh, thing to, to reduce the power on the range test. And I have my little my little signal bars, like you know, like you got your cell phone towers. Well, it'll drop down a couple of bars, and and and, and usually you're fine. This didn't this didn't drop a bar at all. Okay, so I know I got good signal. And she completely passed her range test with flying colors. That's in that configuration. Um, I flew her with a 4000 um, Spectrum Smart with a, 4, with a 30C 4000 4S. Flew great. There's really forward all the way against their little battery. There's a little tray there. You can't go any further. You go right up to next to that. This battery I got in here is just, just, to, just to have it on. Um, it balanced great. I can't say anything bad about the plane as far as its performance in the air. Um, the, um, the, li the linkages for all your control surfaces, they are a little weak. Um, I do suggest maybe replace them with something stronger, a little beefier, but they do work. Okay, like I said, I easily broke one part of the ball link on that wing there, on that aileron there. Um, everything else was pretty well trimmed right out of the box. Oh yeah, something else I did. Well, number one, the typical mod on this kind of a hatch, put a piece of tape there. That way I can easily take this off of there. But something I've been doing almost all my planes now is taking a, I don't have one here, just a cheap hobby brush, okay? I get them for like 22 cents for a whole bunch of them each. And take foam tack or a Gorilla Glue um, clear, uh, any, any kind of glue that, uh, that holds but stays that stays uh, rubbery, you know, flexible. And what I did is I unhooked, unhooked all control surfaces and I painted the hinge. Just a real, um, I don't have anything handy, I'm going to pick up the plane again. But just, uh, here, I got something right here. Hold the phone, dude. Little paper airplane. I just take it, I just take your hobby. I just dab in a little bit of that foam tack and then I just paint the entire hinge with that uh, clear rubbery uh, glue. Foam tack, the Chinese stuff that comes in all the models, Gorilla, clear grip, you know, and then just let your control surface flop. Don't put it back against itself, just let it flop there, okay? And let it sit for about an hour, do something else. And then that makes a nice, a really, something drop, a nice rubbery seal 
and is great insurance and it does not hinder the, the movement of the control surface as long as you let it you know dry floppy like that don't put it in place let, let it work floppy and now you've got a wonderful control surface that's reinforced and you know you're not going to have any problems with a hinge coming on a foam hinge coming on just a little little bit of insurance policy for you because this plane does have laminated foam hinges okay put this back uh, now let's talk about what I plan on doing with this model just as an extra I'm going to replace these wheels with the bros low bounce and I'm going to order maybe that free wing plane there's one guy's got a video out on this just replace this part of the retract with a suspension, a nice metal suspension uh, retract, and put all the Bose low bounce tires here and on the mains. The mains were fine. Um, that'll help even out that landing a little bit. Won't give you so much vibration on landing. Because in model planes, vibration is what kills planes. It's the vibration, the impacts, the uh, you know, hitting the ground, the vibrate. Those are the things that, that, that over time degrade your model. And this is why it's so important that when you get back to the shop, tighten everything up. Make sure everything's nice and tight the way it should be. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is replace these spinners with uh, the chrome metal backing spinners with a probably the same size prop, an 8x5. I think these are 8x5s, but maybe a master air screw or something that matches that with a nice chromed uh, um, spinner here and uh, between that and the DeBros thing should be fine the, the DeBros wheels should be fine she fly like I said she flies amazing of course I'll give her a clear coat of, of the acrylic polyacrylic and uh, let me show you that real quick a lot of people ask me about that I got a can handy right here this is what I uh, put on all my models and after I've flown them one time they then they deserve the treatment I give them the uh, Mint Wax Polyacrylic Protective Finish, the Clear Gloss. Now, of course, you can get the matte and the satin, but I like the clear gloss. I'll put a couple of coats, maybe one, two coats on this. I will mask off the actual glass, and I make sure that when you're uh, spraying this on, don't get too heavy into the hinges. Now, I've got these rubber, these rubberized hinges now. Not too worried so much about it, but this will kind of cake up and kind of, kind of, Make it, you know, all of a sudden your hinge kind of pops at first, you know, because it'll break the seal from this. So just be light, just be careful getting it in the hinges. Don't get too much in the hinge or brush it on with, you can buy this in a can, I mean the dip can, and uh, just brush around that and leave the hinges alone. Just be careful spraying this in the hinges. But this will, this Minwax, Minwax will not put a hard plastic shell on your model. What it'll do, it'll put a nice, like wax on a car. It'll be a nice clear coat so that your fingernails and things like that won't dent into the uh, foam. It protects the foam. It helps seal that foam when you're outside in the rain and the, uh, you know, the weather and stuff. It helps give a nice protective uh, and, and a covering. And it's just a few, not enough weight to matter, put it that way. Okay? I highly suggest doing that to the models you care about. <laughs> All right, this yeah, I'm, this is going to be one of my long-term models. I do not plan on getting rid of it. I absolutely love this plane. The the fit and the finish was pretty good. It's like they they, they did everything great, and then this, you know the the retracts or the landing gear was like yeah, just put chicken wire in there. It was kind of an afterthought. You know everything else they planned out, fit good, and then they said eh, you know okay. <laughs> whatever for retracts. We ran out of money, so. That's my biggest complaint, and like I said, mine had a bad nose gear. I'm not going to go with Hobby King. I'm not talking to him about it. I've already fixed it. I'm done. All right, folks. Well, that's pretty much it. I can't think. I know you're going to have a million questions. You're going to say, what about this? What about this? What about that? What about, you know, um, the 4,000 put in there, CG'd her out really well. Uh, the CG is about 80 to 90 uh, centimeters back which is going to put it right about even with this first panel line here and uh, 
very forgiving plane. It's got some good flight characteristics, but understand, I'm going to show you that we're going to go to the maiden video now. It was windy, so really windy day. I mean, it was really windy. Not a good day to maiden the plane because you really can't get a feel for the trim. But she flew great even in the bad weather, even in the bad winds. So I can just imagine on a nice, calm day, maybe five or six mile an hour winds, this thing would fly amazing because she flew that, she flew this well, or as well as she did in the bad weather. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go now to the maid. Enjoy it. Bye, y'all. Oh, yeah, I got to turn it off here again. I keep forgetting this. Hello folks, Fat Guy Flies RC. That beautiful thing in front of you right now is the Avios King Twin. Same thing as the Beechcraft um, King Twin Air. So, same plane. Got a good look at this thing. Man, against that sunlight right there. Oh, that beautiful, beautiful plane absolutely gorgeous and take a look at them them props the uh see the white tips on the props here isn't that cute that's really cool uh, stirrable nose wheel the uh gear as in the real one rake forward a little bit which that could help with uh might help a little bit with nose overs on, on high grass but I wouldn't be, I really wouldn't be flying this in, in high grass or anything. I would try to get a smooth runway as possible with this thing. Um, of all the, 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 the two things that have been negative on this plane from reviews have been the nose gear being weak and they said some of servos. But that's just a couple of people saying that. The majority of the people or say oh yeah and also some of the mo uh, sometimes the motor mount screws might have been a little weak or a little loose um i went in tightened all the motor uh, motor mount screws they were all tight one was just a little bit loose i mean just a touch i tightened it up um went in there made sure that my servos everything's working good everything sounds good and uh nose gear is nose gear i mean i can't really do much more with it um it goes up and down okay so you know um, we'll talk more about that when i do a post uh, maiden and, and uh because there was there was an issue but we'll talk about that when i do a post bill post maiden video so uh right aileron left aileron up elevator down elevator right rudder left rudder and little windy let's turn around i want to see where the sun is real quick I look, and it's still kind of up there but uh man this wind oh i don't know if i want to maiden this nice of a plane in this wind i know you're y'all are thinking oh come on come on <sighs> well no i'm gonna hold on all right we're back i'm going to go ahead and give her th the maiden the uh wind has died down a little bit more sun has gone down a little bit more so it's not quite so much see if you look it's just on the urge or verge of the horizon so it's not quite as bad so we got right aileron left aileron up elevator down elevator right rudder left rudder all right motor on, motor on. i because i've been letting it sit here with the battery plugged in i took 20 seconds off the flight timer so i've got four minutes and 20 seconds or four minutes and 40 seconds from a five minute timer so oh i'm nervous i'm always nervous with a new plane
Well, I can tell you, looks like you don't need a mix. Yeah, it looks like you don't need a mix. Hey! <laughs> She's down! She's down! And she didn't crash! <laughs> but anyways, it looks like you don't need a mix for uh, flaps to uh, for flaps to elevator because I didn't put one in and when I uh, put the flaps down a while ago just a second I didn't notice any ballooning at all so and the other thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to have to use a Y to put the lights or something because I only got six channels and then i'm going to take that nose gear and get it off with a rudder get it where the where they work independently maybe put the rudder or the nose gear on the roller here and steer it that way um because that nose gear is so long it's tight it's strong but it's so long that's just going to have a little bit of slop so if you notice when i was taking off trying to get a positive uh a positive uh a takeoff was a booger all right let's uh get her turned around here yeah even even though that that nose gear is in there nice and strong boy she is a booger bear all right right okay Boy, oh, she's a good looking plane, that's for sure. Good looking plane. Hey, Vios, I think you've redeemed yourself in my eyes. Gotta tell you though, that, that props are awfully noisy. I'm wondering if they're out of balance. Let me come by. I don't know if my nose gear came down or not. Nope. Gear up. Gear down. Now it did. One thing you got to remember sometimes with these electric retracts and these uh, little light foamies, they're so susceptible to. Uh, they are so susceptible to the wind and vibration. So don't put your gear up and down while you're in a turn. You're just asking for trouble. You're asking for them to fail. And so you're just better off. Whoa, man. Whoa, that wind caught me well let's see I think we're gonna be okay though let's uh, make sure we don't have any binding or anything motor off. motor off I'm gonna turn her upside down now we still got a good well, over two minutes of flying so let's turn her upside down make sure our gear are going up and down Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, because if they were uh, to get loose or I got loose or bound on that little sideways maneuver there, then they might not have opened and closed. And the last thing I want to do is to belly land a brand new plane. So let's back up a little bit, turn our motor back on because it seems like planes just seem to work so much better when you give them when you turn the motors on. They seem to take off a lot quicker. Maybe it's just me. But see, 
that nose gear is so long that even just by the design it's got a lot of slop so let me get down here i just my depth perception i like to be behind the plane when it takes off i know i shouldn't have to be like that but all right going into the wind so i do not need flaps And see, I, I took off. Yeah, I think one of them props are out of balance. Or right, I'm going straight. This time. Going to lander. Oh, man. That not beautiful. Look at that. Well, you know we got I got a minute. You know we got to go again. Get up. Get down. All right, all my gear is down. I was in, I was running flying flat there. <laughs> all right there you go folks we are definitely going to call that a successful maiden of the avios king air twin so what do you want to hear before you touch a plane motor off, motor off or however way you do a sound designation to turn that motor off because the last thing you want to be is stupid and get a finger lopped off because you were careless now I want to show you something real quick. All right, remember in the unboxing video, had a problem getting this, these wings to click in, right? All right, that's all I'm holding on that wing right now. Just that, okay? Just that. So that is in there, that wing ain't coming off. Let me turn it over and I'll show you same thing on this side, okay? That wing is, I'm seeing, I'm off the ground. That wing, that, that mechanism works just fine. Works just fine. All right. And, uh, okay. Yeah, I did take the cowlings off um, to uh, one screw. Was a little loose on one of the motor mounts. So that was, thank you for, I forgot the viewer who told me about that and uh there are some other things that we'll talk about in the post made and post build video but let me show you got a 4000 smart battery right there okay and uh she's firewalled there, there's a wall right there you can't go any further and we put the hatch back on okay and that puts her cg just about it's kind of windy so i'm getting moving around the cg just about perfect slightly nose heavy but that's what you want just slightly nose heavy when you're mating the plane you want that positive control nice pin control holding that battery latch in what i'm doing right now is i'm going to take this battery out of here and i'm going to show you how much life flew for four minutes and 30 seconds okay and I've got, I got 54%. So I could, I could have flown for another good minute and a half or at least another minute of hard flying. So, hey, a uh, five minute timer on a 4,000 would be just about perfect. All right, folks. Well, there you go. 
that is the let me put the hatch back on so you see the whole thing um that is the avio or avios avios uh king air twin which is the same thing as the beechcraft uh king air and uh you know same plane um the props that are on there i think they're eight by five props three blade if you get the albatross or you're shopping for the albatross they sell that's the exact same prop and they're in stock right now the only difference is they have yellow tips instead of white tips now these props right now at hobby king are out of stock so you can get the plane but you gotta buy a separate set of i always buy a separate set of props but they were out of stock so i might get those albatross ones all right folks thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget faith family and friends and then planes bye y'all